Okay, so given all of these obstacles and distractions that people have, what, what do they do to stop procrastinating? Okay, so now we're moving right into the tips. I've got a stack of tips that are in four categories, so here are the categories. Number one, strategies for maximizing your focus and your time. Number two, routines to implement. Number three, tactics for tackling a complex goal or project, right? And four, an emergency plan for when you're feeling overwhelmed. Okay, so those are our four areas. I'm going to start with regaining your focus. So first of all, it's very important to optimize your workspace for work. Right. <laughs> your workplace, it's for work, right? So what can you do to do this? First of all, I think it's important to turn off the email alerts. Dr. Steele says that you turn off email alerts, you're 10% more productive right there. Wow. It's a really easy box to check. And I can tell you today, I was working on a document this morning before coming in here, and I had the email alerts on, and it just... It just draws your attention away from what you're doing. You lose your focus. It's so easy to get distracted and then to slip into that email. So get so rid of it. even if you're not, I mean, I think some people would say that they come in and they, they just glance and go on working, so. Yeah. No. I okay. mean, how many times do they actually end up jumping <laughs> back into the email, me. right? Right. And also your concentration, you lose, valuable, you lose a valuable moment when your concentration is flipped over to something else. Um, do, pro okay, this is a, this, this can be very useful. You're someone who's kind of jumping out into email and also likes to surf the web. What I would say to you is take all your personal uh, email and your web surfing and those activities off your work machine. Bring in an iPad and take your iPad to the coffee shop and, and surf the web there. Take it as much as you can. Take it out of your office. You know, by, by creating that division between what is work time and what is play time you, you know, is very, very important. It can help you be a lot more focused. Get yourself a visual cue in the office for what's important to you. If it's important to you to get home at a certain time, so you're in time for your little boy or little girl to go to bed, have a picture of them right by your computer. It reminds you about why you're making the choices you are during the day and what you're choosing to focus on. If it's taking your dog for a walk after work, then have a picture of your pup right by your, by your computer. The next thing is to, to remember um, closed door time. And probably a lot of you get this, but some lawyers I work with don't get it, and they have an open door, and all kinds of distractions happen. So one guy I was working with, um, he, he told his assistant that he wanted to have his door closed between, I think his time, his highly productive time was between 10 and 11. So he asked his assistant to help him remember to close his door between 10 and 11, and she did. When he forgot, he'd say to her, you know, he'd, she'd say to him, hey, I'm going to close your door now so you can have that hour of focused work. Closed door time. The next one, this is a really, this is a very important one, is thinking about your day in terms of when am I most productive and when am I, when am I tired and less focused, right? And how are you scheduling your work around those periods? So for instance, I'm thinking about uh, you know, a tax lawyer, for instance, who uh, is highly productive and does his best work and is most productive in the morning. Okay? And he was finding that he had been just scheduling meetings whenever. He'd have meetings in the morning, he'd have client meetings in the afternoon. But what he did is he made the decision to start putting his client meetings in the afternoon in his low energy time, you know, after 3 o'clock, and using those morning hours for his focused work. It was hugely impactful for him and really helped with his procrastination. He was able to get a lot of stuff off his plate first thing in the morning, right? Um, so think about, okay, what am I doing with those really quality hours for me, what are they? It, for everybody, it may not be the morning, right? It might be the afternoon. Understand what those periods are and make the best use of them. And then use those low energy times for those things on your list, your to-do list that you're procrastinating about, like filing, like finishing time entry, like calling up somebody that you, know, you need to get back in touch with. Right? Um, the other thing is to think about, uh, is to understand that how we work. We work in waves, our bodies work in waves. So going back to that high sort of period of, of energy and focus, you know, we can maintain focus for about 90 minutes at a time. And after that, we start to have a slight drain. We start to get stressed a little bit. We start, our, our mind starts to tail off. Just watch yourself as you're working and see how your body feels and how your, your mind is working. After about 90 minutes of focus concentration on something, you might need to take a very short break, just like for a couple of minutes and then turn back to it, right? Just a couple of minutes, that seems like so little. Yeah, I don't think you need a lot. Sometimes it's a short break, five minutes even. You don't have to take a long break. Okay. Um, and finally, I think with regaining focus, it's, if you can deal with email in batches, it's really great, right? Like choose a time, work, work intensely in a, in a high energy period for 90 minutes and then turn to your email and do email for a few minutes or 15 minutes, then get back into a project. So when you're thinking about how you schedule your day 
and how you schedule your tasks. Think about what, you know, how much energy do I need for this? When is it best done? Is it best done in the morning or the afternoon? So we have a question that I, I think sort of fits in here. Um, this person, Michelle, thanks for this. Her justification is, I'm hoarding the work against that day when no more clients walk through my door. I hope that day doesn't come, but... Oh, yeah. I mean, I think everyone has that, that fear. I've heard so many lawyers about have talked to me about that fear, right? That, and I have it too. I mean, like the that one was, day... That was me adding that nobody was coming through her door. <laughs> she's saying how do you... The justification she has is that she's... Well, I guess you are talking about that. What Go is ahead. it? No, tell me. No, no, you were right. She's hoarding the work against the day when no more clients walk through the door. Right. So, you know, you're going to say, that's the choice I'm making. And, you know, is it a sound and, and reasonable one? You know, when was the last time that happened? You know, how often does this happen to you? And, you know, what, do you, what can be more powerful for getting more clients in the door than having happy clients? And so when you're hoarding the work, um, when you're hoarding the work, uh, and, and are you, does that mean you're not completing work for your clients? You're, you're, you're slowing down? This is not an investment in your future as a lawyer. You know, your future, your future and, and your, your business development, your client development is best served by getting that work done well and in a timely manner and communicating with clients. So it, in a sense, you're sabotaging yourself with that mindset.